Ventilator mode classification. Control types. This lecture was adopted from the following journal article. Classification of ventilator modes, update and proposal for implementation by Robert Shatburn. Now control types. The control type is a categorization of the feedback control the function that the ventilator uses. And we're going to start from the most basic, which is set point control, to the most advanced. So there's a hierarchy of the evolution of the ventilator modes. This is going to be a very basic overview of um, control types. And currently in the United States, there are six um, control types that are on mechanical ventilators that are in operation. So let's start with the first one, which is set point. So set point control, what happens during set point control is the operator, um, they make a setting and there can be multiple set points possible and the ventilator automatically matches the constant operator preset input value. And the example I'm going to use is just pressure control ventilation. So when looking at pressure control ventilation, we're looking at my simulator here. I'm confirming the mode. And as you can see, one set point is a respiratory rate with a certain fixed inspiratory time of two seconds. And another set point is the pressure, of course. So I'm just going to start ventilation. And my set point is pressure. That's one. That's the feedback the ventilator is using. It's always looking at the constant pressure for the certain amount of time. So set point is very basic and needs a lot of operator input to make adjustments. Next, we're going to talk about is auto set point, and this is a little more advanced. And what that happens is the ventilator selects which operated or adjusted set points are enforced at the moment. So, with this example, I'm going to use a baseline in gray is grayed out to show the contrast. Currently have a resistance of 5 and we're going to change that. And as you notice that my volume is going to remain the same. The square waveforms, the, the flow waveform is the same, constant flow. And my peak pressure starts to rise. Um, I have the Pmax set at 35 right now. And what happens is, is it will remain a volume controlled breath unless the Pmax is reached. And as you notice, the resistance changed at 30, and the Pmax has been reached, and you notice the breath starts squaring off. So it's turning into a pressure control breath now. So with auto set point, in the last example with the Pmax, it will, the ventilator selects the volume targeted breath until it hits a pressure threshold, and then it changes to a pressure control breath. The next level is a servo, and with a servo control, the ventilator output automatically falls a varying input. And with this example, I'm going to use automatic tubing compensation or automatic tube compensation that's on various ventilators. And we're going to look at a couple things. We're going to look at the blue pressure waveform, and we're also going to look at the red flow waveform. So these might look like pressure support breaths. And automatic tubing compensation is kind of like pressure support. However, the pressure is variable based on the patient's flow rate. So you notice the variable flow rates 
and here's a large breath or a large inspiratory demand and the pressure to compensate for it increases significantly versus the other breaths. So I have a lot of variable breaths, breath variability. What the ventilator is always doing is it's always looking at my variable which is flow and it's changing the pressure. It's calculating how much the pressure it needs to compensate for the inspiratory flow of the patient. So automatic tubing compensation is an example of cerebral control. Now adaptive control. What happens during adaptive control is one ventilator set point is automatically adjusted to achieve another set point as the patient's condition changes. And what example I'm going to use is pressure regulated volume control or PRVC and this mode is available in many ventilators which is adaptive pressure ventilation so as you can see there is a volume target of 600 and what happens during adaptive pressure control is is it's going to titrate the pressure up and down so the tidal volume can be constant. So what the ventilator is doing in this adaptive pressure control is it's automatically adjusting the set point of pressure to maintain the tidal volume 600. So it'd be the exact same thing as the operator using pressure control ventilation and targeting a tidal, target vol tidal volume by adjusting the pressure control up and down. So what I did is I made um, compliance changes and resistance changes which drops my tidal volume and what we notice now is that our tidal volume is a little lower it's only 594 and it's 588 and what the ventilator is going to have to do it's going to have to increase the pressure to meet the tidal volume of 600 so our peak pressure is only 17 right now. So I'm going to change the patient's condition a little more here. I'm going to change their pulmonary mechanics. I'm going to select patient. I'm going to change the pulmonary mechanics. And it's going to drop my tidal volume a little more. And as you notice, my peak pressure has gone up by one centimeter of water. And with adaptive pressure control ventilation, it's looking at the exhale tidal volume between each breath. And what it'll do is it'll usually adjust the pressure control up to two to three centimeters of water per breath. So our tidal volume with those uh, changes I made on the simulator is dropped the tidal volume down to 545. And now what the ventilator is going to have to do is it's going to start having to increase the pressure to maintain the target tidal volume of 600. So just showing that the peak inspiratory pressure went up from 17 to 19. So our next control is optimal control.